Are you going to keep the whiskers on your face like they are, or what are you going to do? I'll trim the sides up kind of nice, and take a little off the top as well, right? Seventeen, please. What would you like? Oh, good question. Um, do like a one on the sides and back, and. I don't know, maybe an inch off the top. Kind take, of go. take an inch off the top or leave an inch? Did you get over uh, take an inch off. Okay, so, the so now the one's nice and close. Yeah, yeah. I got over the right. How high do you want the one uh, taken to? Fair. I spent my summer in 1992 working with my dad, and he took sickness quite fast, and he died in January with lung cancer. When he passed, he never sat down with me and said, Joe, I'm giving you the business. I'm passing you the torch. And that was never discussed. His death and taking care of his family was all, all that was discussed. I felt this is his shop. I'm just going to stay here and run it for him. Hey, Joe, how was that little dog that was hitting the parking lot here yesterday? Oh, he's the one that got the uh, tail cut off? Yes. Is I guess right? uh, I guess they made out all right. They had to bring him across the street to uh, Walmart. They took the pup to Walmart? Yeah. The, yeah, because yeah, his tail got cut right off, but... They can help them at Walmart? Well, they are the biggest retailers. I sit in the barber shop one day at my uncle's shop. I was getting ready to get out of high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I said, I wouldn't want to do that. Same thing over and over again. Nah, that's not for me. So I went in the Navy. And my best friend, his father was a barber, and he had just started cutting hair. So he says, why don't you cut hair in the uh, barracks and make some extra money? So that's how I started. Well, I got out of the Navy in 65, so I started cutting hair in 62. Started working for my uncle in 65. 71, I opened my own shop. Had that till 83. Moved to Arizona as life takes its turns. Came back to Cortland and uh, stopped in here at this shop. Met Joe, and seven years later, I'm still here. Got some pretty big things going on this weekend. Halloween weekend. Some of the Fred houses are having dinner parties and whatnot. Not yours? Not mine, no. What kind of party are you guys going to have? We're not going to have a party at all? We haven't last night. Yeah. You had a party last night and you're looking this good this morning? Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. Making nice friends, seeing them time after time after time, getting to know them and their families and personal life. Pretty neat. So when they come in, you say, hey man, what's, how's your dad doing? You know? You don't have to hunt and pick and talk about the media. Why is it that when you tell a lie to the government, that's called a felony. When they tell a lie to you, that's called politics. Very good. Your son doing good? Yeah. Doing good, he's in London right now. It used to be my father's business, so I still see some of his customers and the customers that he used to have are quite old. Now you see their kids or their grandkids. One of our young customers who started coming in here when he was barely able to walk, as he grew up, it was okay with his father. He used to go out back and get a Playboy and bring it out here and look. He went to college. Well, on his college break, he came back to Ithaca. He came home one time, end of a school year. He says, Joe, can I talk to you about something? And I said, what's up? He says, I'm going to be a father. I said, oh my gosh, really? I said, oh yeah, yeah, he's from reading those Playboy magazines. I knew it. He said, no, let's be serious. I said, I'm trying to be serious. That's, that's, I don't know whether to say good or bad. What'd your parents say? Oh, I haven't told my parents yet. I wanted to ask you, how do I approach my parents? I'm the barber. Like Joe said, like a psychiatrist, like a psychologist. We've had some pretty quiet guys in this morning. Sometimes we get oh, the real Oh, this would be a great here. time for uh, for Dave to come in. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? Oh, jeez. <laughs> We'd be done, Joey. We'd be done. In the 60s, you know, the long hair started to come in. And most barbers, especially the older guys, didn't know how to make the change. And so they just quit. That's when the franchise came in. That's why they... They picked up because they were doing both men and women. When they first came, they were a threat. But now, actually, it's better because barbershops are coming back because they, people realize that these people aren't consistent. You go in, you find somebody you like. Your next time you go in, they're not there anymore. The barbers started to make a return because people wanted that personal touch. We take a serious interest in doing the very best that we can. And I think some of the chain shops they're there just because it's a jab. This is not just a jab to Joe and I, it's 
our profession, and we love it. When you like something, I think you'd be good at it. Every year from January 93, with the exception of one year, business numbers has, have increased. We are now beyond maximum capacity. We are working 10 hours a day, nonstop, five days a week. It's hard work. We don't take break for lunch. Business has been great. Yeah, there was a little bit of an accident uh, yesterday, Joe. You went outside and talked to the officer. Long story. That girl hit the hit the truck. They yeah, said so that guy was backing out. Yeah. Yeah, he hit the. Tr she hit the guy in the pickup. And what? Uh, what did the cops say about it? What did they do? Well, Whose fault? Apparently, it was a young girl. She wasn't wasn't paying attention where she was going. The guy was backing out at the same time she was coming through, and she hit him, hit him hard. Anything else that transpired or nothing? Just well, she wasn't paying attention. She was she was using a vibrator. It's pretty wild. What did cops say? The cop was a little bit annoyed at her. I guess he turned to the young fellow and asked him what. What's his version of what happened? What did he say? <laughs> you won't believe it. He never saw her coming. <laughs> Traditionally, barbershops were the gathering place. That's what it's really meant to be. People come in here, they feel comfortable, they see their friends, they see their neighbors, and some of the conversations. I learn a lot every day when I come to work. And to see them come in and have a good time. Some of these guys get a haircut and they sit back down there here for half an hour. Makes you feel good. And what do we do if we mess up and cut the guy's ear off? Are you going to knock that off your... You're not going to keep it in your film, are you? You're going to let that out or... Uh... Ange has nothing on us. Right, Joey. <laughs> you know how to take video with your phone, Joey? Text you with a little video? Oh, yeah, I could, huh? Well, Ange, uh, you have nothing on us because uh, we got uh, CNBC down here doing a documentary.